This one's pretty unbelievable. Right here we have a almost factory new 1996 Impala SS. What makes this car so unique? It's got 5,200 miles on it. Stunning. Under the hood of the uh, 96 Impala SS, you're gonna find Chevrolet's familiar LT1 uh, 5.7 liter V8 engine. Now the LT1 is out of the Corvette. Uh, it was out of the C C4 model uh, at the time, because it was a 96 uh, car. But 260 horsepower, this one's rated at. Uh, it's a little bit detuned because they emphasize a little bit more low end torque uh, with this engine, but it's routed to a four speed automatic transmission routed to the rear wheels. Now, I remember being at the 1993 Chicago Auto Show and seeing this car roped off in black and going, holy cow, I hope they build it. They did. 96 was the last year. The reason this car is so much more valuable is the only year with analog gauges and a console shifter, uh, which is why if you look at the marketplace, you'll see a significant disparity between the 94, 95, and the 96 models. But let's take a walk around it. It's in museum condition, so we're really just going to get an introduction to what the Impala SS is. Uh, and then we'll take it for a quick spin to show you how brand new it really is. This SS is in 100% factory condition. Uh, you can see the whole front end there. I mean, it's in factory showroom new condition as well. Uh, front plate frame's on there, but not compromised in the least. Uh, everything's in original condition. It doesn't even feel as if the car's ever really had a, you know, a proper uh, waxing, uh, as if it's just in completely original condition from the factory. Uh, down here, these are Impala SS specific wheels. These are from the factory. You've got a uh, BF Goodrich Comp TA tire on here, uh, 255.50. ZR17, and they are mud and snow rated, which is nice because a car this size, uh, you can still carry five passengers very comfortably, but condition is uniform all the way down. The right stickers in the windows that came from the factory. You can very see, very faintly see the Impala SS badge right there in the quarter panel, and the Impala badge right behind the seat pillar there. But coming around to the rear, it's in factory new condition as well. I'm just in awe we even have this car. This is one of my dream, this will always be in my dream garage. Uh, I've never owned one. I probably came close to buying about three to four in my early 20s and I never pulled the trigger on it. And right now I'm kicking myself because uh, I really want one. This is unreal, unreal, stunning car. If I was dead, you could probably throw a couple other people in there with me. But this is one of the traditionally largest trunks I know of. You can see you got the factory floor mats in here as well. Got the rears that are in excellent shape. Fronts are in, I mean, factory new condition. It's crazy how, how gorgeous this car is. But look at that trunk. I mean, that's a ton of room. You can see on the deck lid too, right above, uh, you got the proper sticker here uh, that just shows all the parts that they use on the car. It's all the parts codes when they built it brand new. Looking in this car, I'm reminded of the factory catalog. Uh, I mean, the interior is in absolutely stunning condition. These seats are known to wear. I mean, there's the tiniest little bit of wrinkling on the leather here, but that's going to happen, you know, in the first thousand miles of ownership, just getting in and out of it. But uh, it smells like a brand new Chevy showroom from 96. I mean, it really does. Uh, if you see this car in person, you'll know exactly what I mean. But I mean, the interior is immaculate. You got dual power seats up front, and they're very comfortable leather chairs. Uh, you got a tilt wheel, automatic headlamps for the front. Uh, decent sound system, you got a CD in dash there, obviously air conditioning, but like I said, that console shifter in there uh, is really what makes this car valuable, but it's a, I mean, no joke, it's a big car, so it's, it's really, really super comfy. I would be really hard pressed not to get extraordinarily comfortable in this car. Rear seat's really comfy too. Uh, you know, obviously the Caprice uh, chassis that this is derived from is a police and taxi car, uh, so obviously you're going to see a pretty broad back seat here, but very comfortable, this leather is very cushy. It's got a little armrest to pop down. I'd be comfy back here. The 94, 95 models had a, just a digital display here with a large digital speedometer right in the middle. Uh, reminded you of every police car you've ever ridden in. Um, and I've never ridden in a police car, so I'm actually gonna refer to taxi. Um, it reminds you of every taxi you've ever been in. That's why when they change it for 96, it's just a lot more cleaner, a lot more elegant. Uh, much more refined look to it, but really simple. I mean, you've got your, your necessities, obviously, your wipers over here, automatic headlamps, as I stated. Uh, air conditioning, which is actually blowing nice and cold. It actually feels really good because it's a pretty humid day in Chicago right now. 
Uh, and then below that, you know, we've got this uh, floor shifter here. All right, in all truth, um, I turned 16 in 1995, so right in the middle of this car's production run. Um, so in 1993, uh, I turned 14, so I was at the Chicago Auto Show, and they had the black Impala SS roped off at the back of the display. And it wasn't even on like a prominent stand or anything, but I just remember seeing like this Caprice body, and it was totally blacked out. It had these wheels, I mean, it was this car. Uh, obviously in black though. Um, I remember thinking that was one of the coolest looking cars I'd ever seen uh, and hoping they really would build it. Uh, and they did. They made the Impala SS for the 94 model year. Uh, that, so that following year it was out. Uh, I want to say it stickered around 26 grand. I don't think the price changed too much uh, throughout the run of the car. And I don't think there were really any options aside from the color, which was black, uh, this kind of bluish green color, and then black cherry. But, I mean, this is an amazing example of this. So, anyway, confession. I, my confession is I wanted to say that uh, this is probably a car that I conned my way, way into more test drives uh, when I was in high school than any other car. Um, I, I just love driving this car, and I haven't driven one in probably six, seven years. And uh, I asked my wife last night if she, how much she loved me uh, and asked if uh, it was possible that she would let me buy this. Uh, she didn't. Uh, she did say she loved me, though. I'm not really sure how much you did by not allowing me to buy an Impala SS, but... Alright, we're going to do a little uh, roll on acceleration. Whoa. Awesome! Alright, let's hit that again, Mo, in a second. That is awesome, that's great thrust. Slow down here, but wow, that LT1 is still really, really potent on this. This is just such a comfortable car. I mean, we're cruising along at highway speed, and it's, it's comfy and quiet and refined. I don't know if I would have totally have expected that uh, to really have rang true after all these years of not driving one, but it, you know, steering, I mean, you don't get any feedback. It's still kind of firm. There's some tension in it, but you don't get any feel for the road, but the car just kind of floats and wallows, but... It's probably one of the closest interpretations of a modern day muscle car uh, that you can buy and drive, you know, that's a relatively modern car. And then think back to 1996. A uh, good performance car competitor might have been the, let's say the BMW 540, uh, which at that time was about a six second zero to 60 time car. Uh, this car was a six and a half, uh, at half the price of that. And they sold every one they built. I mean, it was a definitely an in-demand car, but uh, when they killed this platform, they reluctantly had to kill this car. Uh, they brought back the Impala SS name in the front-wheel drive version of the car that they sell today, and it is... I, I'm not knocking it. They make a really nice car, but it's not a rear-wheel drive car. It doesn't have a LT1 V8 in it. It's got a 5.3 liter out of the Silverado. Um, it's 300 horsepower. I mean, it's no slouch. It's faster than this, but there's just that muscle call muscle car element is not there you don't get that but I, I just enjoy driving it I'm, I'm really I'm I don't know I don't maybe maybe we won't sell it as we always do it it's brand new brand new shifts crisp Brakes come down awesome, alignment's great. So we go on to a nice sweeping curve, but Dave and I were just saying that it's, when you drive this thing, it's, you don't even want to drive it fast. It just kind of floats. And I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a car that this car does drive like, and I would really say the strongest resemblance is the Bentley Arnage. Same kind of thrust, same kind of acceleration. Actually, the Bentley feels a little, a little bit uh, faster just because of the torque, but numb steering, you don't feel much but it just floats. Even though you can go super fast in it, you don't necessarily want to. This car so brings out the boy in me. I just, 
I just get this little juvenile giddiness just being behind the wheel of it and being able to experience it in the flesh. And You know, this is a car that they don't build anymore of. The 96 really is the, the classic. And I mean, if it's kept in this condition, I can't imagine that these cars are not going to appreciate over time. Uh, they have steadily and with the used market uh, changing considerably in the last calendar year. Uh, I think it really represents a great opportunity to buy a piece of very desirable American iron uh, in factory new condition. Absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm pretty floored. Uh, a couple pieces of information here. I've got the Carfax and Auto Check History Report, both squeaky clean. Uh, it does show a calculated two owner. Uh, we had the original owner in Missouri and the uh, second owner, uh, which we purchased the car from, actually bought or had the car here in Chicago. But uh, it's really a clean history. Just a heck of a car. But check out our website. You can find us online. You'll find us at chicagocarsdirect.com, where you'll see 60 pictures of this gorgeous Impala. Uh, or check out the rest of our highlight reel. You'll find us on our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash chicagocarsdirect. Thanks for spending some time with this amazing Impala today. And check in with us next time. We'll see you soon.